Hey guys, welcome back. We are at Osh. I know this is my first video of the week, but Wednesday I decided was my day. And every year that I come here, I try to find the most interesting and innovative thing at the show. Because there, there's a lot of the same that's always going on. But this year, I decided it was Microwear Avionics. And they've got something really cool. I'm going to introduce you to David, and he's going to show us his brainchild. The coolest thing I think is here at Osh this year. All right, this is David. David? Hi, Kyle. How are you? Welcome. Do doing great. Thank you for showing us this. And my goodness, this is some really, really cool innovative stuff. Yeah, and great. And just a, a really quick close-up here. These these are all little screens. So why don't you tell us about what this is, why you even did it. And Certainly. Yeah, Absolutely. Just... So so we microwave has been around for about 27 years. We've been building certified radios and transponders. And we, we got to the point where we needed to reinvent them. They know they were, they were dealing with obsolescence issues. We went, well, let's, how do we reinvent everything we do? And this is the result of that. So, Excellent. So, so what we did is we took our radio. And so we know most people will have flown with an M760 radio, one of our radios. We built 25,000 of them ish. Um, we took our radio and we shrunk it down to a third of the size. So wait, that, wait. So that is that's now. That's the whole radio? That's the whole radio. No. Six, 16 watt radio. Um, <laughs> we took our transponder. We upgraded it to mode S, ADS-B in and out. And in and out? In and out, and we oh, shrunk oh, it down oh. into this, 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 this space here. Holy we slept as a third and we went, what do we do with that? So, <laughs> so in that third, uh, we've got a triple redundant air data computer. Okay. We've got a triple redundant um, attitude heading reference system. So three magnetometers, three inertial sensors, um, triple redundant on the, that, and a GPS position source. It's not wow. a navigator, it's a position source. So that, that feeds the position for the ADS-B, but it also feeds it out to your EFB or any other app that you might want to use. So that's pretty cool. So that is your entire six pack in, in, in one box it, with your so radio. That, wait, and this controls all that? Everything, everything. So this, just, this setup here has one of these. Okay. And has five of these. You can have 32 of these. So, wait. 32? Uh, yeah, I've yet to find a customer that's got a use for 32. Got a wait, couple. wait, are you, are you giving me a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take that on. Um, we've got a couple of customers that have done you know, tandem aeroplanes and put, put complete cockpits in two panels and back to front. So they, they, they've got up into maybe 12, 15, I think. They, so the so people are pushing, no one's got anywhere near 32. Wow. Um, so, that's, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, what, so that's exactly what you've got here. So if I pull the panel forwards, um, I'll just unplug the headphones there. If I pull that forwards, okay. you can see just how easy the, the wiring actually oh is. Oh my god! You can see we've got one, one unit, and then we've got these little remotes, that do, and they just daisy chain through. We, we supply these harnesses with the unit, so you're not, you're not making harnesses. Um, you can buy them in six inches, and then one foot increments up to 20 foot. So that's really easy to configure your panel. I mean, a lot of, a lot of experimental guys spend a long time wiring their panel. Oh, uh, no, uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Thank you for pointing um, that out. And, and most, of them are, most of them are really good at, at, at metalwork and woodwork and, and the things that go into building electronics. an aeroplane. <laughs> Some of them are fantastic, but a lot of them it's not their core skill set. Yes. Um, so the ability just to plug through like this is, 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 really, is really quite useful for them. That is incredible um, and so, like simplistic all at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can just keep daisy chain 32. You, can, you can keep daisy chaining them through. Uh -huh. um, which brings us to our engine monitor, okay. which is this device. So what's, a couple of things that are really cool about this, again, you just daisy chain it through, mm -hmm. and, then you, and then if I come there, uh, I went the wrong way, let me go, there's no traffic on this, this, this particular display unit, but there's, there's some of your engine displays. That one I particularly like. Wow. Because it's, no, it's, it's, you've, got, you've got pretty much all of it, fuel, fuel totalizer, total fuel on board, you've got full electrical load analysis at the bottom, obviously the rest of your engine parameters there, peak EGT, peak CGT. Um, our demonstration uh, peaking display. You wouldn't want to be in the air with that Wait, engine. But, I just but that, realized these are touch screens. These are touch screens. <laughs> these, these, these are both touch screens and they're also a rotary encoder. So if I come back out of that, um, so the altimeter, for example, I want to change my Q&H. Oh I've got a rotary encoder. Oh, do and, you guys see that everything is moving? Yeah, so obviously it's obviously all synced together. Um, if I want to change, now I can either press and go in there and I can set my pre-select altitude and you can see that's changing changing on the displays wow. as well. If, um, well. We can talk a bit about autopilot integration, but obviously autopilot works off the, uh, off the same interface. Um, and you can, you can swipe between them. I, I don't like the swipe in flight. I find it's just a little bit too easy to bump around. Some it, people when it's do. Bumpy, yes. so, um, so I turn that off, that's just an option. Um, but if you press and hold every screen, you can configure every screen to have two, this, this one happens to be misconfigured, but two, you can have two, two, two functions, you can immediately swap to its alternate function. And you can configure that differently on every on every screen. Um, obviously, we can. Uh, where are we there? 
obviously we can we wait, can did we can you, did you just press that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so, you, so, so wait, 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 wait. That's a button. Yeah, that, that's that's a button. <laughs> um, and then once then there you can. Oh, oh I, I saw what you're to, doing. Yeah, and then I messed that up. No, no, not at all. Well, look at that dimming. Um, all and, of them. And once. actually, I'll, I'll dim it down to the point that you can't see it here, but I can assure you, in a oh. dark in a dark cockpit at night. That looks really oh, we, cool. That we looks can, really good. We can see it. Just, yeah, just barely. Just that barely is there. amazing. Yeah. So it's really, no, really nice to fly with. Um, You've really put a lot of thought and energy into this Yeah, we this have. Thing. I mean, our, our, core, our core philosophy was how do we... You know, avionics is complex, right, by the nature yes. of it. There's a lot of stuff going on. How do we take that complexity into the unit so, mm -hmm. that, so that the user doesn't have to deal with it, both from a user interface but from an installation perspective as well. They daisy chain the wires, all supplied in the kit, just put it on four screws um, we've always built because we've always built two and a quarter inch product um, then this is a two and a quarter standard two and a quarter inch mount as well we wanted a bigger display so we, we um, came up with the mechanical interface um, to allow it to allow that to be to be mounted that, that way is... uh, there's a we obviously sell a obviously sell an adapter for a standard three and a half inch um, so so when uh, someone is making this they just pop that out or yeah, putting it in yep. the panel so this is what's mounted the panel and then you can pop those in yeah so if someone let's say broke their screen yep like rage something threw something at it whatever <laughs> they can just pop that out and order that separately yeah, yeah that, that, that that that's considered its, its own um, line replaceable unit it's got its own part oh number. my gosh so yeah no that, that that's easy i i'm not i'm not joking i'm getting more and more impressed as, <laughs> well, as that, we're going that, through that, this. that's cool um i think i started to talk a little bit about this so this daisy chains in as we said yes um so this is this is a through firewall uh, um, engine monitor. We call it an engine system in, in, interface because okay. it does more than just an engine monitor. But the really cool thing is, um, you know, as, as I'm sure most of your viewers will know, you know if it, it, any, any part of the firewall has to be able to withstand 2,000 of flame at 2,000 degrees yes. Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Okay. That's no mean feat. Uh, aluminium no. melts at about 1,200. Uh -huh. um, so anything alum alum sorry, aluminum, uh, oh, you're it, fine. It, <laughs> anything aluminum, anything aluminum um, will melt well before that 15 minutes is up. Um, and so most most engine monitors are mounted on the cold side, mm -hmm. and then you've got to wire, you've got to hang your engine, put all the sensors on, poke it through a hole, wire it up on the cold side, fill the hole up with fire, no um, firewall gunk. Yes, and there's a more technical name than that, but <laughs> sealant. Um, and then when you go to remove the engine or do anything on it, you've got to take every sensor off. It's a, it's a, it becomes yes. a big job. Whereas you know the ability here is, is this, this stainless steel plate is integral. It goes all the way through the fire through this box. Oh, so you cut out a, a hole for this, and then it pops through. Yeah, this pops through the firewall. Oh. And there's a steel plate which I've got here. It sandwiches it's on, the firewall. Sandwiches on that. This one doesn't have the um, obviously there's normally um, rib nuts on there. Yes, yes. So you just you know like and lock, then everything from the engine comes in right. Everything here. on the engine comes onto these two connectors. Smart. Um, and then if you need to change, take the engine off, you just undo the two connectors. Um, but in order to achieve that. Then, then we needed the integral firewall. So this stainless steel plate runs all the way through this box. It's got a, it's got a penetration that's less than, well, in, in, mil, in millimetres, two millimetres by for eight. For the connectors on for this the, side. For, for, just, for just passing. So it's a, it's a complete digital interface on this side, complete digital interface on that side, and just a tiny little serial bus that goes back and forth between the two. Very to cool. To make sure we don't penetrate the firewall. Um, so it's a really cool product. Mate, no, it's going to make installing engines a whole lot easier absolutely um, so we're really proud of that and we're launching that here that, that, that that's our oh, that's, that's, our, an, that's that, absolutely that's new. new yeah that's absolutely new um i like that and then then i can talk about this device okay um this is our digital pitot static probe this one happens to have a pneumatic connection to the pitot port it doesn't have to we do have an option with a pneumatic connection to the pitot and static um, and this one has the 120 watt heater on it and that's the heater harness it's, okay. a, it's a digital heater it's a digitally controlled heater so okay. it raises it to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, for the for the you know, the rest of the rest of your viewers. Um, and <laughs> it just holds. You guys are in Australia. We're in Australia. Yeah. Yes. So Celsius is, is my is my natural unit, <laughs> but, but 110 degrees Fahrenheit, um, it just holds it there. So you don't you don't have to worry about turning it on and off. You just leave it turned on all the time. Oh, so it, it just won't warms like up. explode itself. It's never gonna it's I, never gonna overheat. I, I'm in a club club. Yeah. And we've had countless people, we've had to replace the heater element so many times. Yeah. yeah. It is it is a common it is a common problem. No, this this one's digitally controlled. It just warms it up, holds it at that. Um, it will warn you if you haven't turned it on and, and you get into icing temperature range. It will warn it will warn you on wow. the display. Um, but the um, yeah, it, it, you, you did you would just leave it on. There's no need to turn it off. But what's really cool about this, so pitot static angle of attack. Um, oh. and then you obviously that's the temperature probe. 
And then in here, you've got a full triple redundant air data computer. So you can do fault detection exclusion. So if you lose a sensor, then you, you, you identify it and you continue, you continue to fly. We've got dual redundant on the angle of attack, so we can sense whether the angle of attack is, is, is failed or not. So we're never, never going to give an erroneous angle of attack indication. Um, and we've got a, no, a, an AHARS in here as well, so magnetometer inertial sensors. And an yeah. So this <laughs> unit will drive, doesn't have the radio or the transponder of this unit, but otherwise will drive that full six pack. That is incredible. So um, really easy to install, is available noisy, so you can install that on a certified aeroplane today uh, as, as standby. One. What, what about all this? This, this is currently an um, experimental LSA. It is on a, an STC path. STC, yeah. excellent. And, I was and, hoping and, so. And a, and a TSO path. Because so, I can imagine this inside of a plane with a nice metal panel yeah. and these beautiful little dial buttons just yeah. all over. It's but Particularly for people that want to, I mean, lots of people like me, I'm getting older, but you know, we grew up flying. We learned to fly with round gauges. Yes. We don't naturally move to square glass. I'm sure the younger generation would have a very different view to that. There's a lot of our customers that very much um, are interested in maintaining a round gauge in cockpit well, I don't, I don't and, and, myself, and that facilitates them. I don't consider myself that old, but I, I <laughs> you're, do you're, still you're, like you're, the six-pack. You're, 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 you're very young compared to me. <laughs> <laughs> but lots of people do. No, lots of people really do like um, that look and feel of, 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 no, of what we've got there. So Absolutely. Um, so I think, that, now, I think that's important. What is this little guy right sure. here? Sure. So the other thing that we've done, um, <coughs> one of the really um, difficult things of any installation, excuse me, <coughs> is um, is all the wiring you've got to put in for audio. Yes. So you know, your microphones, your headphones, all that wiring has to go to every headphone outlet and run all the way through the aeroplane up to your intercom panel. Yes. Um, so what we've done is we've digitized the audio intercom. Okay. So we've got rid of the panel. Every, every, every location gets one of these little boxes. Um, and it gives, so it gives every outlet a 50, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, you're fine. It gives every outlet a 15 watt USB charging port. Oh my gosh. Because let's face it, anyone that's got kids knows that they're, they're inseparable from them. <laughs> yes. um, and, they can, and they can't live for long without a charge. Yes. Because they never charge their phones at night. Um, so, every, so every outlet gets a 15 watt ch charging port. Options for, you no, know, obviously noise cancelling, Bose noise cancelling headphone plugs or your standard GA plugs. We've got, we've got options for, head, for the heading over helicopters. Um, the XLR as well, um, but the cool thing is this comes this comes completely pre-wired. You can throw the plate away if you don't want the, want the metal plate and just use the harness. But the cool thing is that is completely completely pre-wired, and you can see it there, plugged into one of these units here. Um, that is very and then, easy. And then so that makes that makes the installation point easier there. And then you've just got a, a same a same theory as the rest of our daisy chaining, a different bus, completely physically isolated. Um, but the same, same concept. So you, you know, you daisy chain. So you've got, you've got six seats in your aeroplane, you just daisy chain your way around them. And you've got one wire that actually goes back, back to the radio. Can you show front. us the comm portion of the dial? Sure. There it is. So if I, if I you know, select the free, and, and actually, what I'll do, I'll bring up a second one so you can see it. Oops, hang on. And that's, oh, transponder. The transponder code's there. Um, obviously, you can just you know, select those, but I'll come back here. That's now COM1. So, so no, I adjust, adjust my, my standby frequency here. And you can see it's making no difference here. As soon as I hit trans, transfer, the primary frequency um, changes. So you can <laughs> see that that's all synced between them. So no, not, not, not everybody will have multiple pattern, multiple comms, but they can. Um, there's our intercom panel. Oh. So that looks a lot like a normal intercom. Um, see, now and, I'm starting and, to see why someone would want 32 of these inside <laughs> of their airplane. Because you can do so many cool the, little the, things the, with There's, each there's one. a lot of things, obviously, you can adjust the volume for, for each, each, um, each nav source. And what's really cool is that you know, if the kids are sitting in the back of the airplane, or, or adults are sitting in the back of the airplane, they connect to this via Bluetooth. So no more, no more sticking your headphones underneath your, underneath your noise cancelling headphones. Um, no more take, <laughs> no, my kids always take their headphones off. And then I can never get never get to talk to them, um, so their audio comes comes straight through. Oh my! You uh, really have thought of so much. <laughs> like I, I came to this booth and like this was wild enough for me, and now you just keep adding more and more and well, more. Well, I'll give you one more because because when the kids are kids or whoever's, whoever's listening, um, they get a copy of that audio control panel on their on their device. Yeah. So they can then go. Actually, I'm really interested in listening to the Kong, so I'll turn the volume up. Um, I, I'm, or I'm really interested in listening to the nap. 
don't know why you would be. Um, and I can, I, so everybody gets their own volume controls for all of the radios, for all of the audio in the aeroplane. You can have a private chat between any, any, any groups of people on the aeroplane. So you know, my daughter wants to talk to her mum, she can. My son wants to talk to me, he can. They want to talk to each other. My kids want to watch, want to share. They want to know they're watching the same film on their they iPad. Can. They can share their audio across That's between incredible. them. Um, so yeah, we, we just digitized all that audio and then made it available around the aeroplane. So then we got complete flexibility about what we do with it. Uh, right. Now, I, I am going to turn my attention over yes. here just real quick. Sure. So I noticed you iPad integration. So you've got four flight yes, here. So, so this is four flight. So, that, so this is this has actually got essentially none of our product other than our data. <laughs> so this is a, this is, give credit to everybody. This is an iPad. It's a, a Guardian Avionics mount, and it's four flight app running on it. But it um, uses and, the ADS-B and, and it's and using yeah. So here we've got our that. transponder feeding um, the traffic. This is the you know, tra traffic in, in Oscos. Our antenna's inside this big tin shed. So, oh, okay. um, but but I was watching traffic going in and out of Milwaukee yesterday. So still getting pretty good range. Um, but what's really neat is you also get all of the uh, AHAS data across. Oh, so look at no, that. so the um, synthetic visions there is obviously adjusting to um, no. Me moving the moving the panel. Um, oh, and I also see the autopilot sitting here. This yes, is, yes. So, is that? so, so that's a, so that's a trio autopilot um, with the software integration um, and the uh, no, the trio actuator sitting there as well. And so, you do have a face to control the autopilot. Yeah, we correct? do. So if I come here, oh, um, I turn, and so all all of your mode control can can happen within this. Um, yeah, oops, no, sorry. <laughs> um, with why I don't why I prefer to turn it off and, and have the, the two screens. Yes. But, but if, for example, I um, come back to there was a there was there was a oh you do a, have a traffic, we have a traffic screen there too. That's amazing. So I, can, I come down here. Uh, I adjust my vertical speed pointer. So if, so if I want to, I can adjust my vertical oh, speed for there. Your vertical speed. And I can adjust my airspeed directly on the airspeed indicator as well. Just just you know, set my pointer. And if I want to climb, I want to climb on airspeed. This would be the normal way. So that that's altitudes armed. Um, I can set on the altimeter, I can set what my target al altitude is. Uh, bit, uh, um, it, it will obviously climb in airspeed, climb it will maintain air, airspeed, level off that altitude, um, and away it That's goes. So, we, so we're, essentially, we're essentially controlling the out, you know, autopilots have an inner loop, which is stability, and an outer loop, which is control. We're doing all the outer loop, and Trio's doing the inner loop stuff. So Excellent. Um, well, David, thank you so to meet you much. Come. Thank but, you very much. Yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but like, I learned so much about this, way more than I even thought, and this is even better than I thought, making this truly the thing I think is the most innovative piece of avionics here at Osh this year. So if you guys are here, come check them out. Micro, what? My, I'm terrible. Micro Air Avionics. Um, we're inside. Where are we? We're in Hangar D, um, booth 4001, 4002. So if you're coming in from that side entrance, you're, we're, we're immediately as you come in the door. Can't miss us. All right, guys, come check them out. And I hope this video helps someone if you're looking at their products. You can check them out, I'm guessing, at microairavionics.com? Uh, Microair.aero. Microair Microair.aero. Microair yeah. See, I didn't even know. I hadn't looked at his business card yet. So <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great show. And uh, as always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.